Greetings everyone, welcome to the beginning of the end of the Iron Dominion Saga. If you've come here straight from issue 209, then you've missed out on one-fourth of the saga. In fact, if you haven't already, stop this video now and watch my reviews of Sonic Universe issues 13 through 16, then come back when you're done. For everyone else, let's recap what's happened so far. The Iron Queen used her powers to take control of Nicole. This allowed the Queen's forces to invade new mobile Tropolis. Sonic, Sally, Tails, and Khan escaped to Freedom HQ, where the former two freed Nicole from the Queen's control. The decision was made afterwards to go to the Dragon Kingdom to break up the Clan of the Four Houses, thus destroying the Iron Dominion power base. So as the four head off into the pages of Sonic Universe, let's see what's going on back home. We start with things not going so well for these two. Sure, Amy has the hammer and Sega plot armor, and Antoine's become proficient in his sword skills, but they are outnumbered, and the ones that could really help are off in a spin-off book. Luckily, help arrives in the form of... oh joy, it's Skunk Boy. Okay, to be fair, at this point in the comic, Jeffrey's married, and the relationship between him and the Freedom Fighters has improved. Just don't do anything that puts you back on my list, such as stabbing Sonic in the back or something. Anyway, thanks to his distraction, the three escape and head for the Freedom Fighters' secret bunker, with a tree stump entrance, I might add. Bunny's inside, and she explains to Jeffrey that she's a liability thanks to her cybernetics. Nicole appears, still in her disguise. After some misunderstandings, she updates everyone on the situation. The enemy is preparing to legionize their prisoners in a public display at the Colosseum. The group then explains to Skunk Boy, and the reader for that matter, what legionization is. Basically, it's the process of turning someone into a cyborg, brainwashing them, and sending them to Dark Egg Legion chapters throughout the world. Wow, what an intriguing concept. A cybernetic army taking an innocent and converting them into a new member by force. It's unlike anything I've ever seen before. Anyway, most of New Mobotropolis' citizens have been spared this act, either by being on Angel Island with the Chaotix, or in hiding. But the dialogue implies some citizens weren't so lucky. Still, Amy, Antoine, and Skunk Boy will go and prevent the public legionization from happening. Somehow. Meanwhile, Snively's paying another visit to Crazy Eggman for another gloating session, only to be greeted with an image that's bound to trigger a horrific memory. I wonder if Butler was thinking of his past work when he drew this. Yep, Eggman's lucid again. I'm not saying he's sane because, get this, he believes he's figured out why he could never beat Sonic, despite having an empire. Sonic, according to him, is the living embodiment of chaos. Due to him absorbing Chaos Emerald energy throughout the years, armed with this new insight, Eggman demands Snively release him so he can resume business as usual. Snively, proving he has a spine bigger than his body, more or less says, screw you. He's on the cusp of ruling a new empire with his beloved Regina. Upon hearing that name, Eggman knows exactly who Snively's in cahoots with. He hits the runt back by saying Regina's only using him, and the moment things get very bad, he'll ditch her and run back to Eggman. Snively leaves not wanting to hear this, though he's clearly affected by Eggman's words. At the Coliseum, the Iron King's not a fan of this public display. He'd rather squash people. The Queen explains that the public legionization is a trap. She correctly deduces that the Freedom Fighters are tapping into their communications based on a number of successful strikes. That's actually a pretty smart move for the Queen, though she doesn't know Nicole's the communicator. The first prisoner brought out for public legionization is Rotor. Snively brings up the brief time the two were allies. No, seriously, they worked together for a while. And this sets Rotor off. He does okay for a bit, until his back gives out. Our trio of heroes here rush out to save Rotor's life. Amy destroys the operating table, Antoine frees the other prisoners, and Jeffrey takes on the ground forces. He notes that these guys are pushovers. That is, until the Iron King appears and swats him like an insect. Good thing Amy's hammer is a match for the King, eh, Skunk Boy? She has him help Antoine evacuate the prisoners while she bashes the King. Though it's easier said than done, especially when Techno Floor Masters grab the prisoners. This time, the Iron Queen's responsible for them. Things are getting pretty bad, and it's usually around these points that a miracle happens. Well, what do you know? That's when Sonic and company return from their trip abroad.
Let's talk about the cover. Besides the fact it's one of the few times it doesn't feature Sonic, it's also not the original cover. This was. Sometimes the original cover doesn't work for a number of reasons. However, here, the original cover was repurposed as artwork for the recap page. The main purposes of this issue are A. To show the struggle of the Freedom Fighters without Sonic. They could handle things to a point thanks to advanced intel from Nicole. But without Sonic and Tails' skills, Sally's planning, and even the monkey's abilities, it's tough. And as noted, Bunny's useless due to her cybernetic nature. But I do admire their courage and heroism during these times. It's only thanks to the arrival of Point B, Jeffrey, that the active members aren't defeated in the beginning. I believe this is the first time we've seen Skunk Boy as a main character under Ian's penmanship. Previously, we had either Carl, Ken, or some other writer had a go at this guy. He's a bit cocky like before, but it's definitely toned down. He also serves somewhat as an audience surrogate, learning about how the team's struggling without Sonic, and learning the concept of legionization. Now let's talk about Point C, Eggman and Snively's conversation. This is another sign that the status quo is coming back. While Eggman is still obsessed about dealing with Sonic, he believes he's figured out why he can't win and starts planning around it. He also believes that Snively will turn tail and run back to Eggman when the situation gets out of hand. Is it just me, or did Eggman's trip to Crazy Town gave him the gift of genre savviness? I do think this image is great, and as I hinted at earlier, this is a nice callback for longtime readers. Good job, Butler. I'm giving this issue a 7. This part definitely sets up the next issue, but at the same time, it's interesting to see how this situation is somewhat like the old days, with an occupied city, transforming citizens into slaves, and even a secret base accessible through a tree stump. Now that, spoilers, the journey to the East Quartet has returned successfully, it's time to take out the Iron Dominion once and for all. And we'll see that next time. Until then, have a good day, and be safe. Skunk Boy must really be skilled to sneak into a sealed city. I swear, this guy must be made of air or something.